Hi, so it's been a little while since I recorded an ECG in a minute video, uh, but following a recent case, I thought it would be really important to do a video on the diagnosis of subtle inferior STEMI. This is one of the most commonly missed abnormalities in my experience. Uh, and here we've got a case of a subtle inferior STEMI. So obvious abnormalities that you might see on this ECG are the T inversion through the precordial leads. Everyone seems to spot that, it seems obvious. But there's also an inferior STEMI. Now some of you will have noticed it and some of you may not have noticed the inferior STEMI. So let's go through the leads, focusing in to see why that is an inferior STEMI. So let's focus in on 2, 3, AVF and AVL. That's why we want to look for our inferior STEMI predominantly. Uh, so here we can see in lead 3 and lead AVF that there is some ST elevation. It's a small amount, probably not a millimetre, uh, but it's definitely there. You can see the pink line here is about where the baseline is and the ST segment is clearly above that. You can put something in that gap, so there's clearly ST elevation. Why is it not a millimetre? Well, the R wave is not very tall. Look in lead 3, you've got a very small R wave. Just here, this uh, in lead three, this first one, you can see very small R wave, so you don't need that much ST elevation. You sort of interpret the ST elevation in um, relation to the height of the R wave. And you can see the same in AVF, a small R wave. But when you look at that as a sort of image, not measuring the amount of ST elevation, that ST elevation does look significant. And the height of the T wave is significant too. Let's just hone in on lead three here. And here we can see that first complex, the T wave is as high as the R wave, it's really peaked. And in the second one, it's probably about as ha half the size of the R wave. It's a peaked T wave in relation to the R wave. And that makes you suspicious that this SE elevation is because of a STEMI. And if you're not really sure about it, the, you've got to look then for reciprocal changes, because if you've got reciprocal changes, that's going to nail your diagnosis. And the first place you should look for reciprocal changes when you've got a suspected inferior STEMI is lead AVL. Because here in lead AVL, you tend to see ST depression. That's what exactly what you can see. You can see this down sloping ST segment going into the T wave. And it's definitely there. There's a reciprocal change that nails that diagnosis of inferior STEMI. So in summary, look at this ST segment elevation in relation to the height of the R wave and the inferior leads. Look at the height of the T wave in relation to the height of the R wave. If it's peaked, it makes it much more likely it's STEMI. And if you're not sure whether this STL elevation in the inferior leads is because of a STEMI, then look at lead AVL and you'll likely see some reciprocal changes and that will nail your diagnosis if you see it.